Hi, I am Bill Mould. This short presentation will be about optimal spoke length. I've been a master mechanic, a little background in aviation. I've been a college professor, seen here teaching an organic chemistry class, a lesson about thermodynamics. I built between four and 5,000 wheels of every conceivable type. Besides building wheels, my favorite time is spent teaching others how to do it. So let's ask the question, why do bicycle wheels fail? Customers bring bicycles into the shop all the time with failures, but when they're in the wheel, it's usually because of something wrong with the spokes and or the nipples. As mechanics, we should be forensic scientists. Something caused the spoke to fail. What was it and what is the cause and effect? Here's a picture of a spoke and a nipple. If we look at the nipple in cross section, we can see that the nipple has 19 threads and the spoke has 21 threads. Of the 19 threads on the nipple, 17 are full threads and 2 are half threads. Here is the threaded end of the spoke drawn to scale. If we put in some dimensions, we see that the spoke diameter before the threaded part begins is 2 millimeters. The major diameter, which is the crest to crest diameter, is 2.2 millimeters. The minor diameter, the root to root diameter, is 1.8 millimeters. The bottom axis or the x axis is length in millimeters, and we can see that the thread pitch is 56 threads per inch, which is about one thread per 0 0.45 millimeters. Here we see the cross section of three identical nipples. The dashed lines in each case mark the beginning of the threaded part. And we're going to examine what happens depending on how far we screw the nipple onto the spoke at the point that we reach full tension. The top picture is with the spoke reaching the bottom of the slot. Then the next picture would be the spoke reaching the end of the slot or the end of the nipple. And the third picture here where the spoke extends past the end of the nipple. Here are some helpful graphics of the spoke and the nipple, and this will help us visualize what's going on. We start to screw the nipple onto the spoke. If we reach full tension and our picture looks like this, then obviously the spoke is way too short. This is better. This is still better. And this one is still better. But I want you to observe that we have a stress point right here where the um, thread on the nipple reaches the last thread on the spoke. And that stress point will be made worse if the spoke has to go off at an angle, which is usually the case. We can see, obviously, that there's going to be quite a bit of pulling and yanking on the spoke where it's the thinnest at the stress point. It sure looks like we have a problem because it looks like that nipple will not go on any farther because we have run out of threads. But if we look at this Mohs hardness scale, we see that stainless steel toward the bottom has a relative hardness scale of 6.0 compared to either aluminum at 2.7 or brass at 3.0, so stainless steel is harder than either of the materials commonly used in nipples. So in fact, I can screw the nipple on much farther than I think I can, and the harder spoke will flatten out the threads inside the nipple. If we look at these two nipples here in cross section, the one on the right is a new nipple where the threads are undisturbed, but the one on the left I have screwed on much farther than I normally would and then taken it off. And you can see that some of the threads in the nipple have been flattened by the harder material in the spoke. 
And we have the same thing with aluminum nipples. The one on the right is a new nipple, and the one on the left is one where the threads have been flattened by the harder material in the stainless steel spoke. So I can, in fact, go beyond this point. These tips of the nipple threads here are going to be flattened as we go to this picture. Now, two points. The first is that you have to do a spoke length calculation and then add either one or two millimeters to it to get it so that it, the spoke sticks out the end. And the other point is that a lot of people are going to look at that and say that the spoke is too long, but I don't think so. Especially if we compare the spoke on the top with the one on the bottom where I have an awful lot of stress on unsupported threads of the spoke. So I will submit to you that the picture on the top where it shows all of the threads of the spoke being buried inside the nipple will result in a longer spoke life. Which means that the spoke arrangement shown at the bottom there is the best one. If you found this discussion interesting and you would like to learn more about some aspects of wheels that are not commonly understood, you might go to my website and take a look at this very deep dive into all aspects I could think of concerning bicycle wheels. Here is my contact information. Thanks for watching.